In this demo, I'll show you how to write a data frame to file storage in CSV format, and then how to read those CSV files into a data frame. CSV is a plain text file format that stores tabular data where each row represents a record and fields are separated by commas. The data in a CSV file is stored as text. So I have some code here that creates a data frame. It stores country information, specifically the country name, the continent, the population, and the area in kilometers squared. So let me run this cell, which will create a data frame assigned to the variable df. So let me run it. Great. So let's view this data frame. So I will do df.display. So here is the data frame. So I want to demonstrate how we can write this data into our Databricks file system and then read the subsequent files. So I want to store it specifically in DBFS file store. So into its own folder or directory called write underscore demo. So to do that, I can type the following code. So I can do df.write dot csv and then just specify the path that i'd like to write it into so that would be db fs colon slash slash so i mean you can also get the path like so by going to the location so i want to copy the path here and you can do this format or this format doesn't really matter let me just copy this so it would be this and then slash write underscore demo and I would also like to call the data countries underscore CSV. So this is where I'm writing the data. So let's run this. And that's worked. So in the file store, so if I go to catalog DBFS, we can see write demo. And here is a directory. So inside that directory, we have multiple files. So let's examine what's going on here. So instead of writing a single CSV called countries underscore CSV dot CSV, we have written a bunch of files. So inside of this directory, we have partitioned files. So ignore these files with an underscore prefix for now. We're interested in these files with the prefix part. These represent partitioned data files. These are the actual data files that store the country's information. Each file represents a partition of the process data. And together, these files make up the entire country's data set. This naming convention with part, followed by a unique identifier, allows multiple parallel tasks to write data without conflicts. So each partition was processed by Spark in parallel. This is the core of how Spark performs distributed processing. And you notice each of these files is a CSV file which is the format we specified. Additionally, we have these underscore files. These are known as marker files, like success, committed, and started. Success confirms that the job completed successfully. Committed marks a successful transaction, and started signals the beginning of the job. So let's use dbutils to view the contents of this directory. So I will do dbutils.fs ls and then specify this directory and I will display that. So here is the directory. So we have the path and then we have the name of the files. So here are the files. So let's examine one of these files. So I'll just copy the path to this file. So I can just copy this and then I will just put that path into dbutils.fs.head, like so. And I would like to print that. So now we can view the raw contents of that file. And as you can see, it is indeed a comma separated file. And this represents a partition of the data. So you'll notice this does not contain the full country's data. It only contains a certain number of data points. So what happens if I try to write this data file again? So if I try to rerun this write operation, what would happen? 
This time, we get an error. Path already exists. This is because data already exists in this path, and we haven't specified the mode. Spark doesn't know if it should append this data to the existing data, or if it should overwrite it altogether. So let's set the mode as overwrite. This will mean that it will replace the existing data in that location. So let me just copy this and I'll go to the bottom. So to specify the mode is overwrite, I can just do mode equals overwrite, and this should work. And indeed it does. So we have overwritten the data in that location. So let me show you the alternative syntax. Instead of specifying mode equals overwrite here, what I can do is specify mode as a method. So let me get rid of it here and then do and do df.write.mode over write like so. And this should also work. And indeed it does. So this is using the CSV method. Personally, I think using the save method is better than the CSV method because with the save method, you can use it for multiple file formats because it takes a format argument. So the equivalent syntax would be df.write.format, specify format as CSV, and then I would do dot .mode as overwrite, dot .save, and then the path. So I could just copy the path here. So this should also work. And indeed it does. So now let me specify some options. So for example, when we view the raw file here, we can see we clearly saved the file as a CSV format with comma separators. Let me change the separator from a comma to a semicolon. So I'll show you two ways to do that and I'll paste in some code. So here is the code. This top line uses the option method. So here you specify each option individually in this format. So you do the key, comma, the value, the key, comma, the value. So you can specify true like this or like this. It's both the same. The second approach specifies options. Then you have the key, the equality operator, and then the value, and then a comma, and then a new key value pair like so. So with this approach, you can specify multiple options inside of options, but here you have to have each option individually. Both are valid and it's up to you. So let me run the second one and this should also work fine. But note this time it will write the file with a semicolon separator. So let's run this. So now let's again view the contents of the directory. So I will just borrow this code here, and I will rerun it below. So let's preview the contents of one of the files here. So to do that, we can do print dbutils.fs.head, and then specify the path. I've just got a typo here, so it should be dbutils. So let's run this again. And now, as you can see, the values are separated by a semicolon. Great. So now that we've gone through some examples of writing data to CSV, now let me show you how to read the CSV data that we've stored in DBFS. You can do that via the read method. This method is accessed through the Spark session. So we can type the following, spark.read.csv, and then the path to the files. So we can specify the directory. So for example, we can specify this directory, and then what it will do is it will combine all of the CSV files, which are these partition files, and output that together. We can also specify an individual partition file, and it will ignore all of these marker files. So let me copy the path to this directory. So if I specify the path to the directory, then that will work. So if I do, if I run this right now, it won't display the data frame, it just creates a data frame object. To display the data frame, so as you can see, this is a data frame object. 
To display the data frame, I need to use the display method. So here we go. But the reason we get the output like this is because it's expecting CSV format. So it's expecting the values to be separated by a comma. Instead, it's separated by a semicolon. So we need to specify this as an option. We also need to specify that the first row is a header. So the way we can do that is by specifying the separator as a semicolon and the header as true. So this time, let me assign it to a variable. So I'll do spark.read.csv and then specify the path. And then I can do the argument sep equals semicolon and then header equals true. And then I will do df.display. Now, as you can see, the output is as we expect. We can alternatively use this syntax as well. So we have two approaches here, one where we use option again individually and then one where we use options. So let me just execute one of these. So I'll execute the top line this time and then display that. And that also works, as you can see. Similarly, we can also use the load method. So if I type df equals spark.read.format CSV and then specify the options, so I could just copy these options. Dot load and then the path. So again, let me just copy the path. And then I will do df dot display. And as you can see, that's also worked. Now notice that the data type of each of these columns is a string. And we can verify that by doing df.print schema. And indeed, they are all strings. This is because data in CSV is stored as strings. So to read the data and assign it to the appropriate data types, we can infer the schema. So we need an additional options. So actually what we can do is, so what we can do is specify an option as infer schema and then true. And then I will do df.print schema. So this time it has inferred the schema and it has assigned population and area as integers. Similarly, what you can do is you can specify the schema explicitly. So let me just paste in some code. So what I'm doing here is I'm importing the Spark data types struct type, struct field, string type, and integer type, and I'm defining the schema here. I am then using the schema method to pass in this schema here. So this should also work. So let me run this. And indeed, that does. Great. So that wraps up this video. To recap, we wrote a data frame to CSV and explored the resulting files. We then read the resulting CSV files back into a data frame and we inspected the schema. For more details, please be sure to check out the Spark SQL API.